Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord one more time. All right, so this short exhortation is most like some encouragement to our young people as we embark on Child's Month and today being our Youth Sunday. We're basically focusing on the topic, Youth and a Mission for Christ. Amen? Amen. So, from this general topic, I narrowed it down to uh, what you call a subtopic being stand for the standard. Can you repeat that? Stand for the standard. All right, so could you please put on the monitor there? Daniel 1, 5 to 8. And could everybody stand? Find that scripture, please. Daniel 1, 5 to 8. And could you all read together Daniel 1, 5 to 8? Can't find that now, you know. After 2, 1, 2. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. And could you just jump to verse 12 to 17, please? Prove thy servants, I beseech thee. Ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servant. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave, God gave them, them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Amen? Yeah, you may be seated. All right, so again, the topic for Youth Sunday is Youth on a Mission for Christ, focusing on Stand for the Standard. So youth is defined as the period between childhood and adulthood, right? So basically that is all of us. So we're all youths based on this definition. Many of us had the privilege of being exposed to God from a very young age. And I've heard many adults that who came to know Christ at an older age saying that they wish they had known of Christ from a younger age and basically had more time to fellowship with members and to worship Christ, right? So the funny thing is that a lot of young persons nowadays, they don't share that same sentiment. Serving God at a young age is very important as it lays the foundation for a closer walk with God as you enter into adulthood. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So this basically means that you must not let the, end, the excitement of your youth cause you to forget who God is. Honor him in your youth before you go hold and say that life is not pleasant anymore. So based on the passage of scripture that we read, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are assumed to be young people, right? 
So if you continue reading Daniel 3, you would realize that there's another passage that focuses on the three Hebrew boys, right? And we all know the story. They were basically tested to bow down before the image that Nebuchadnezzar built. And we know how that resulted. They decided in their cell and publicly that they will not bow down. So much like the members in our assembly right now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are young people. And from an early age, they've decided to walk with the Lord. Amen? So many of us, if you look around, you see the different uniforms. We are all young people. Most of our young people attending different institutions, such as high school and university. And can prove to, this can prove to be a challenging time for many of us, especially when it comes to maintaining the standard or keeping the faith in serving God. Anybody agree? Anybody find this period of time very easy? You're going to school. Let me see a show of hands of everybody classroom whose classmates are all Christians. Right. Some of us, we are the only Christian in our class, right? So basically, living in an era where many factors, especially social media, purchase everything and anything outside of God as enjoyable. So most of our youth are challenged with serving God, even when they grow up in church, from them born them in church, when they enter into high school, the challenges turn up. So, all of a sudden, church is not enjoyable anymore. We don't want to do the things of God anymore. Everything that our school purchase seems more fun, right? So, as it as youths, it may even try to, the things that they are now creating as enjoyment, it may try to dissuade us from staying on course on the mission for Christ. We have to have a personal relationship with Christ, knowing Christ for ourselves. And when it becomes our life's mission to know Christ, making him known to others and standing in the faith will be a natural outflow, right? In the first passage of scripture that we read, we saw where Daniel was on his mission for Christ. He refused to partake in the king's meat. It says he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. He stood for what he knew was right. He stood up for his belief, and we saw where God showed up and out for him, right? Likewise, the three Hebrew boys were determined not to bow to the image, even in the midst of death. And I know many of us from we hear death, we would have switched. But they decided that even if God did not save us, we will not bow. But we read where in the end God delivered them while making believers out of the naysayers. So he did not just save them, but because of their, their action which resulted in him saving them, others around were converted. Amen? So we go to school, many of us being desperate to fit in with the masses, we try to hide who we were called to be. I know many of us right now are guilty of that. We enter into high school, and even if God's so good, we go to high school, we enter into university, we hide who we were called to be. Amen? We forget that Psalms once said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. On our mission for Christ, we can't be everywhere and doing everything. Amen? It's like trying to mix oil and water. Anybody ever tried that? Anybody experimental cooking? You're trying to mix oil and vinegar. It's just not going to mesh. Right? St. Matthew 6, 24 to 26 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Amen? How many times do you feel left out because you've decided to take a stand for Christ? Many have asked, and I don't know if, I keep asking, I don't know if you have experienced it, because I have experienced it. Why you can't do so and so and then ask God for forgiveness? Amen? And then I went further to look and say, why Daniel never just eat the food or the Hebrew boys just bow down and call it a day, right? Amen? 
And it can be just assumption, but I've always thought of a twist of scenario where had Daniel had eaten the meat or the boys bowed down, the end result, I just feel within my spirit that it would not be good for them. Like you might see others, young people going to school, you might see your peers, you may even see somebody that you know should be a Christian doing what is not according to our standards. And you say, nobody not see them, nobody not correct them, but I just know within myself that if you're going to try what them try, the result would not be the same for you. Amen? So many times there is a situation where unbelievers who would mock you for upholding the standard, and listen to this clearly, them watching you, you know, so the moment they'll be, they'll be there mocking you, oh, you're wearing your skirt, your ear natural, you're not comfy but the moment you take up yourself and do what they want, now you say you're a Christian. So they are watching you, and within their self, they're basically admiring that you are holding up your standard, right? And we're not doing it for them. It's within us, but just pointing it out that them same one who is looking and mocking, they're actually being impressed by what you're doing. And the moment you let that banner fall, that is when the problems come in. That is why the Bible says in St. Matthew 5, 14 to 16, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So don't be fooled. They are watching, and it is within you to maintain that standard. Stand for the standard, for you are youth on a mission. Don't be sidetracked. Don't come off that path that you are on, because the end result will be great. Amen? So your peers, as I was saying, don't be fooled. Your peers See the mission that you are on, and I'm imploring you to stand in your position of spiritual authority in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And our youth, I implore and I pray that the parents who are serving God as well, help to not just pray for your children, but to actually put out the actions as well. You can't just be saying, oh, they're young. I could just pray for them. You would not eat good food and give your children poison, right? So why then, with certain things that you believe is right, you are doing it, but you're allowing your children to do the opposite. It just does not work. And therefore, it is causing confusion, and it, is, it will be hard in the long run to get them on the right path. So the walk has to match the talk, and that is how we will continue on our mission as youth, and stand for the standard. Amen. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Praise God.